Hello, my name is Mara Torres. I'm going to do a lit review about dollarization not being implemented in Latin America. Uh, I have done research over two weeks now. And before I get started, I will give you a little background so that you will not be too lost with the subject. Um, Financial dollarization is a process in which a large share of residents' assets and liabilities are denominated in U.S. dollars, has been a distinguishing feature of the banking sector of many countries in Latin America, making it one of the most dollarized regions in the world. Financial dollarization is typically a consequence of past episodes of severe economic crisis, high inflation, which made the U.S. dollar a more preferred currency to minimize risk, provoke savers as well as lenders. When economic stability was restored and inflation declined, dollarization ratios of deposits and loans have usually remained high still. So our first article is What is Driving Financial? De-Dollarization in America by Mercedes Garcia Escribano and Sebastián Sosa. And this article, a time period, is between 1995 and 2008. The thesis of this article is, the main purpose of this paper is to explore the short-term drivers of financial de-dollarization in Bolivia, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay. Um, first of all, uh, foreign bank penetration in low competition, uh, in long competition rises. Uh, because there's more options and becomes less monopolized foreign currency, debits and credits, while it exempted from uh, the transactions in Bolivianos, just to make um, the consumers more attracted to it. Um, deposits on dollars or dollarizations have a stronger impact on credit um, dollarization in the means in all of these countries. These are expected results and mainly reflect upon the bank's behavior of maintaining a much in foreign currency that is due because the, uh, the banks have more dollars um, within their accounts, they're more able to invest within dollars. For them, it may see like a more um, credible currency, a more reliable currency, so they will prefer to do loans upon that currency. Um, article number two is Dollarization Myths and Realities by Sebastian Edwards, and this article takes place within 2001. Uh, the thesis of this article is the purpose of this paper is to remedy, at least partially, the situation and to investigate the historical records of countries that have lived under a dollarized monetary system. Estates or countries that ultimately um, want to go into dollarization, they mainly do it to achieve credibility, growth, and to have a higher prosperity. Uh, however, there has been no evidence that dollarized countries have more prudent fiscal policies than non-dollarized, and that can affect later on their country even more because it can create a bigger crisis. Um, it does uh, eliminate or lower risk because investors will see the dollar as a more reliable uh, currency but still there is side effects to that uh, for example the mean gdp of panama within 1970 to 98 was 7.7 percent in comparison to other latin american countries that had 8.1 percent you can see right there uh, that other Latin American countries had a higher percentage of GDP. And even though it is somewhat promised that once you go into dollarization, you will have a higher GDP right away, or not right away, but more quickly, and that you will reduce um, inflation, you will reduce risk, and more investment will come towards your country in comparison to other Latin America. But we will follow along why Panama um, has a lower GDP. Um, for example, um, it had uh, Panama is somewhat addicted to IMF programs, and that is because whenever Panama's economy is going back down or it's becoming or a crisis becoming to like being seen the the IMF that is mostly controlled by the US 
will kind of give them another loan to get. They will offer them this like, oh, try this way and you can get trout and you can move on without having a crisis. And that is mainly due to the fact that the U.S. has such a geopolitical interest in Panama. Um, we, can, we could have seen that also previously and the Norwegian crisis in which Panama was under military control and the U.S. Uh, in order to not lose control to the of the Panama Canal, which is huge for them, just retaliated to Panama by freezing all of their U.S. dollar assets. Um, and also due to that and the fact that they had a lot of current account reversal and their invest uh, their trades weren't as high as they were at another period of time. Um, non-dollarized nations or countries had a lower GDP, ha, pardon, had a higher GDP. And due to having a lower GDP, well, you have lower investment. Our third article is Lessons of the Guru for Dollarization, Analytic and Political Economics Perspective. And that is by Harris Dallas, George S. Talvis. And the time period of this article is 2001 as well. The thesis of this article is this paper assesses the implications of Euro experimented for dollarization in Latin America. First of all, this idea or notion that Latin America should be dollarized was mainly uh, occurring after we saw such a success in the EU with the Euro, obviously. Um, but also another thing is that, uh, for example, with them and how we can see it implemented over here, the elimination of currency transactions costs and exchange rate is stimulated trade and among the monetary participants and also it retaliated in an income correlation. Um, a single currency also is easier to control within the private sector to keep tabs upon it. When we exchange, for example, also when we exchange domestic currency for foreign currency, we are depreciating our domestic currency without even believing it. So if there is a country that is doing a lot of trade, a lot of transaction, a lot of exchange rate among them, it will decrease their, uh, it will decrease the, the domestic currency. The differences between Latin American countries and uh, the U.S. are not sufficient hinder for a dollar monetary union as it was in, uh, in Europe. A solution is that a group of nations such as the uh, European Union decides to join in a new currency and is not controlled by only one central bank as it will be dollarization controlled just by the central bank. Another option is that a country has to relate on different currencies due to uh, policy um, like it is nowadays. Therefore, you just change policies in order to make it more flexible so investor will, investor will, not, uh, will not see it as an obstacle, but rather uh, take it as another task within their business. Um, additional solution is a currency board that will be pretty much all the nations get together. They create a currency board that manages um, their exchange rate for the trading. Dollarization, um, as we saw in part in Panama, just created more political benefits for the U.S. due to the crisis in, throughout 1988, and which kind of give us a lesson that we should not trust one country to take over our monetary policies and our monetary system because at the end of the day, they're not thinking of the other country's benefits or not. They're just thinking upon themselves and that can affect greatly how a country does because that's how they can retaliate against uh, trading, that's the way they can retaliate against um, partnerships with other countries in wars or whatnot. 
Our fourth article is dollarization for an ownership competition in the banking industry in Latin America. That is by Aldo Gonzalez, Alejandro Mico, and Andrea and Ana Maria Montoya. In the time period of this article is 2011. The thesis of this article is the purpose of this article is to reassess the relationship among foreign ownership, dollarization, and competition in the banking industry. So the ad adaptation of dollarization or a currency board which reduces transaction costs and facilitates financial integration it has a positive correlation with competition and productivity. This is the case of Ecuador, El Salvador, and Argentina. Uh, throughout that, we can see, as in the previous article, is stated that if we um, opted for a currency board, perhaps instead of going to dollarization, we can still solve that problem without just that being the only answer. Uh, once again, dollarization and currency boards are a positive correlation to a competitive banking industry. Um, it goes along the lines of, of lowering transaction costs, increasing financial integration, and extended financial options, which firms and houses can hold and choose. Um, like I said previously, once uh, foreign bank penetration comes into a country that has low um, low involvement or low participation, it will create a more a more join a more equivalent, a less monetary, a less monopolized uh, financial sector, which will help so much firms and other trade uh, and other trade countries or um, companies that may want to invest in there but may not see that much flexibility. Article 5, um, the name is Efectos de la Dolarización Oficial en una Pequeña Economía Abierta, El Caso de Ecuador. And this is by Brady Camille Onuktas and La Ganti Toga. And the time period of this article is 2004. The thesis of this article is the present investigation constitute in the input of additional literature that bore the effects of macroeconomic dollarization within the trimestral statistics. Okay, first of all, some of the points are dollarization is an is a notion and in a nation part it can go two ways. It can quickly lower inflation rate and kind of bring back to speed the country, or it can create a huge problem if no monetary problems, uh, if their monetary problems continue, and also it can worse if there are no proper policies to, to be implemented with that. It can just be like, like we said previously, a quick, easy way to get out of it, but not a completely way to to resolve a problem. You cannot just like hide it under the carpet and want to get dollarization. You still have to implement policies and work through it. Um, for example, in this article, it mainly focused on Ecuador and their do dollarization. Uh, for example, Ecuador did um, agree upon dollarization mainly because 47.3% of their exports in Ecuador go towards that country. So at some point, it seems more of an easier way to go along with the trading partners. But for example, for other countries, it may not be the same. Um, the increase in GDP was not completely dependent also on dollarization because their mining and uh, petroleum sector increased so much higher in comparison to other years. So in conclusion, we agree that dollarization is not the only option. It does re reduce risk. It does reduce lower inflation. It does help the company. It does increase investment usually by foreigns. It does uh, increase bank a foreign bank penetration, but it gives us and ends us up uh, giving more political power to other countries, such as the U.S. Um, they have control over our monetary system. They do not see the farewell of in a specific country, except for themselves. Uh, we are not only if we do if those nations that decide to go upon dollarization do not implement the right policies, then this problem gets even worse because they have no control against Federal Reserve. And in shorter words, dollarization should not be implemented in Latin America because we will just be giving up our power and expecting that the other country does the best for us.